Hello everyone. This is an animated lesson that will go through the steps required to produce a carpenter saw stool or saw horse as it's sometimes referred to. We shall start this lesson by setting it out on an 8x4 sheet of plywood. To do the required developments we must draw the orthographic view of this saw stool, in other words plan, elevation and in view and we'll be doing it at full scale on that 8x4 sheet. Now the required developments here would be the true shape of the legs and what's called the dihedral angle on those legs. The dihedral angle is the angle between both sides of the leg. In other words, the face side and face edge of the leg. Many may make the mistake of thinking the leg surfaces are square to each other. For example, the two surfaces visible on the nearest leg shown here in this illustration will be actually a couple of degrees beyond 90 degrees, so they'll be more than 90 degrees to each other. I would also like to add that even if one chooses to house in the legs to the sawhorse top, that this dihedral angle must still be developed and planed on to the legs. The positions of the mortises um, will be um, taken off the uh, plan view uh, of the saw stool. On the top surface you will see the position of those mortises are further in from the end of the saw stool top as compared the distance that they are in from the end on the underside of the saw stool top. The tenons on the legs will have to be developed from the true shape uh, of those legs. Uh, and you will see that as we go further into this exercise. You will also see this assembly process and how we um, go through that to make sure that we maintain its uh, 3D shape. As we progress into this um, exercise or journey, you'll also see the learning uh, attained from this exercise that transfers into other areas of carpentry and joinery. So this is a quick glimpse of the learning value of this exercise if it's done well. Here we have an example of why the end of the saw stool has a notch on it. This, this notch is done in such a way as to accommodate the thickness of a typical door uh, with a little bit to spare. So you can secure a door um, in such a way that it can be planed uh, while you're fitting uh, the door into a frame. It should be noted also that uh, when you're cutting out this notch, that the end of the notch and the end rail below that's dovetailed into the legs they should be vertical to each other otherwise you don't want the door hitting the end rail before it goes into the end of the notch ideally you would like to make contact with both pretty much at the same time and uh, also uh, the saw stool itself would uh, have to be butted up against the wall of course so it doesn't move whilst the door is being planed Here we see another reason for this notch. Uh, you will see that the sawhorse notch is preventing the door from swaying uh, while the lock is being fitted. So the carpenter would sit across this sawhorse as if he was actually sitting on a horse. So the carpenter's weight is keeping things stable as well as the notch. Uh, so. A router template will have to be made to take out the carrying slot uh, routed through the saw stool top, as you can see here, sintered. The same template will uh, be also used to uh, take out that 20 millimeter deep housing you see between the mortises on the notched end of the sawhorse. This is a handy place to keep small items like rub screws, etc., uh, when you are fitting the lock on a door, for example. Here is a nice metric view of the setting out with the actual saw stool superimposed to give a visual on how the object will relate to the setting out. So you can see the actual saw stool's top here in wood grain effect. It's projected up from above the actual 2D plane that the plane in view and elevation is drawn on. So I just did this so as you can uh, compare and I've kept the outside corners of the legs in red for both the, the 2D uh, view and the 3D view that you're looking at there. 
And here is that visual taken a, a step further, which shows a more complete saw stool standing on the setting out sheet shown in grey here, just to give you a visual, visual of where it is we're heading with this setting out. The uh, isometric view shows the 2D setting out, which is now shaded with a wood effect to help visualize and compare to the 3D version of this saw stool also shown here. So here is the isometric view of the setting out sheet with the orthographic view complete shown in gray and the saw stool itself standing on that setting out sheet for comparison and to help visualize where we're heading with this setting out. So let's begin the setting out. Uh, next you will see an 8x4 sheet come into view with uh, three rectangles drawn for each of the separate views we will be uh, developing. Coming into view here is our um, setting out sheet shown with a grey wood effect. Um, on this setting out sheet we'll now start the full size setting out of our saw stool. Uh, first to start with, as mentioned earlier, will be an orthographic view uh, from three perspectives of that saw stool. And from that then we'll be doing the developments on this same setting out sheet. From the um, end of the sheet, uh, hook your tape on the left side there and um, measuring 800 millimeters and continue on to measure a further 550 millimeter and from the bottom edge of your sheet there uh, measure up a uh, 500 mil wide and uh, then continue on with the tape and add on another 550 mil wide so you'll end up with those three shaded in rectangles that i've shaded in there one is called the elevation view one is called a plan view and one will be the end view Then drawing the saw stool top from the three different perspectives as animated here. The top is 220 millimeter wide by 45 millimeter thick. And just to also add, the top from the is shown in blue in the three different uh, perspectives or three different views. To uh, give some realism to the drawing, I have uh, shaded in the top in wood effect. Uh, this part of the setting out. The red lines illustrated here relate to the outer corner of the legs from three different perspectives. You will also start to see lines projecting between views. Often one view cannot be complete without points being projected from another view, as is the case here in relation to the outer leg lines drawn in red here. The leg lines on the plan view are drawn at 45 degrees because the lean or pitch inwards at the side and end is the same. So this is similar to a hip roof. If the side and end of a hip roof have the same pitch, then the hip line will be 45 degrees on plan view uh, for a rectangular building. Offset the inside leg line in the elevation to give a leg width of 60 millimeters uh, as shown in yellow here. Uh, on the in view, uh, offset the leg line by 40 millimeter to give it that thickness as also illustrated in yellow here. Then complete the drawing of the legs from the three perspectives uh, as animated here now. This is the almost completed orthographic view. The taper on the legs and dovetailed in rails are omitted here. These will be marked directly on the saw stool as we advance into this lesson. The centre carrying slot, housing slot and in notch will also be marked directly on the saw stool uh, after it has been assembled. Here we have a zoomed up view on the process involved in drawing in those mortises. The mortise can range from 18 to 25 mil thick when you're drawing this in. The 
Note here how points have to be shared or projected between the three different views before all three views can be completed. So here we have the plan view showing those four mortises coming through the top of the saw stool. Now that we have the three separate views of our sawhorse drawn, we are ready for the next part of this lesson, which will start with the development of the Tahitha angle and leg surfaces.